So I want to start off with a very broad question uh, to both of you. Um, with the latest news that we've heard that there, might, there is a ceasefire now that has been called between India and Pakistan, um, we now have this opportunity to now reflect on the last few days and see, one, what was the nature of technology that was this time used by both the Indian armed forces and also on the Pakistan side? And what, uh, what insights and what lessons maybe both of you have drawn from the last few days of engagement? Uh, Lieutenant General Panwar, maybe I'll uh, start with you first and then we'll come to Sir uh, as well. Sure, thanks uh, very much for that introduction. It's an honor to be here. Now, coming to your question, uh, you know, we've been uh, with all this, uh, with the Ukraine war going on for the last three years and before that, uh, and of course the Hamas operation also, and before that, uh, when the Azerbaijan conflict and all took place, so with the, all that in the background, we had been conjecturing and thinking, applying our minds as to how warfare, the character of warfare is going to change in the years to come. What has happened, I think, with this operation now that we are talking post ceasefire is that it has given a glimpse as to it's not just somewhere in Ukraine, uh, Russia conflict, but it is uh, uh, going to be applicable to us. Although we've seen a very, very small glimpse of how how the nature is changing. So that's the broad comment which I would like to start with. Coming to specifics, what we have seen, apart from the conventional warfare wars which we have been used to, Cargill and before that 71 Ops and so on and so forth. Primarily, it's very clear, I mean, it's the drones which have, uh, you know, come onto the battle space in a very big manner. In fact, most of the operations. So drones is one. The second area is, of course, precision weapons. The use of these uh, over long, long range precision vectors. This is the second part. And related to these two are the air defense systems and the counter UAS systems. So this is the gamut of three, four heads which have become evident. And this, 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 is, a, this is a battle space against which the last few days which you've seen uh, action has taken place. Now, Going to a little more specific as to what has been used in what manner uh, and then comparing it to what has been happening in Ukraine because I feel that compared to Ukraine, uh, the types of systems which have been used, uh, possibly uh, the full manifestation has not been there in the manner in which uh, it has been affecting the Ukraine uh, operations. So here we see from, firstly from the, let's say from the pa uh, Pakistan side, the use of low-cost drones, large number of low-cost drones, several hundred being used in a day, they are costing of the order of a few hundred dollars, maybe up to thousand dollars. A large proportion, I believe, have been on the surveillance side. A portion of it, proportion of it, have been armed also. That's why some, uh, some, you know, you know, some uh, uh, effects have taken place on ground too. So this is one component which has happened. From the Indian side, I would say that we've used a, a, a higher level of drones. So, for example, the Herops, the Harpies and the Herops, which we have, these are the Israeli uh, loiter munitions, which we have required over a period of time. So, some of these, as reported in the uh, in the open domain, they've been used for, uh, the uh, for I think they've basically been used for uh, suppression of the air defense systems. So, a uh, uh, a heavier sort of munitions have been used and our actions also have been on the heavier side. We've been trying to make an impact uh, to the respective targets. So initially we start, started with the terrorist locations and thereafter once they, uh, when, once our military stations and all, then we targeted military stations also, but with heavier levels of uh, precision weapons. Also, uh, you can say loiter munitions of a higher quality. Now, when uh, coming to our counter U.S. systems, so we've seen that not much effect has taken place uh, with all these hundreds of uh, drones which have come in. So what has come into play? So one is the air defense systems. So uh, there's a lot of talk of this Akash Teed which has been there. Uh, there's not much mention which has been made of the Air Force IACCA system. That's also a air defense system. It's and the two are integrated. So these are the two types of air defense systems, control systems, which have uh, come into play and very effectively, I, I should say. 
and then of course uh, the air defense munitions so air defense has got a whole range of things which is uh, i'll not go into those details it has been reported in the literature and though not effect, uh, though not so uh, extensively mentioned in the media is also the electronic warfare systems so as as far as these uh, the lower uh, quality drones the dji mavic type of variety type of drones the electronic warfare is very effective against these so a mix of these and there has been a uh, a, a counter us grid also which has been in operation uh, as reported so these are the types of systems which have manifested or which have come into play over the last 3 4 days with the operation which we have seen coming to the other aspects of it one is we always talk of cyber and cognitive cyber i think uh, some uh, some reportage uh, was there of use of uh, cyber attacks or assistance but affecting the uh, the main operations i think the, there has been a very limited impact because the systems which are affected are not the mainstay systems but some related defense systems uh, which have got affected and lastly the cognitive aspect of course is always there which has been playing out in the background so both sides claim just like ukraine russia here also uh i mean they're different and it it is very obvious from uh, at least to me it is obvious from the way the reporting has taken place that any any neutral observer would observer would find that the transparency which the indian sites have shown on the use of uh, you know dissemination of information is much more credible because our media is absolutely open you try to hook on to a pakistani media you will not find uh, much reporting tink based on that side so to that extent while cognitive aspects have played a role but i would say it's essentially the kinetic aspects uh, which have really uh, you know uh, played out and now led to this ceasefire 